Cats and TV. Hey everybody, Cats and TV here, and today we are talking about the often misunderstood A196 phase lock loop module from Dopefer. But first, what is a phase lock loop? Basically, it's a system that takes an input signal and then generates an output signal that matches the phase of the original input. The typical phase lock loop consists of a phase comparator, loop filter, oscillator, and feedback loop. The A196 contains these building blocks, including the oscillator, phase comparator, which has three different settings. The first one is XOR, the second one is a flip-flop circuit, and the third one is a more complex phase comparator circuit. And then finally, there is the low-pass filter section which is probably better described as a slew. In this first example, we're going to sync to a square wave from the Sputnik oscillator because PLLs sync quite well to square waves. First, we hear the Sputnik square wave, which is also displayed in red on the scope. Now we hear the A196 square wave, which is displayed in green on the scope. As we change the source frequency, the PLL continues to track. We have been using the advanced phase comparator. Now we're going to switch to phase comparator 2. OK, it's a little bit crustier in this case. Now we're going to switch to the XOR. It is the crudest of the phase comparators, but it also affords the most musical possibilities. We can adjust the slew and the phase offset of the oscillator to get some very interesting sounds. Now we're going to try a more complex waveform from the Sputnik oscillator. Again, we're going to start with phase comparator 3. As we adjust the waveform on the Sputnik with the timbre knob, we see how the PLL tries to catch up with it. We're also set up to change the timbre from an external keyboard through that purple cable. Okay, we're going to try switching to the XOR comparator. As you can hear, as we adjust the signal, different harmonics pop out of the phase lock loop output. Okay, so we're going to try an even more complex example using the Arturia Mini Brute 2 as our external signal with the brute factor turned up. As you can see and hear, we get a very complex sound from the PLL. We're going to adjust the slew and the oscillator offset a little bit. Okay, now we have something really rich and actually quite musical. And we hope this gives you some ideas of how you can use this module in your own music. We've really only scratched the surface. There are many other ways you can use the PLL as both a sound source and a control signal. For more information, please look in the description section below this video. Thanks for watching. Check out more at www.catsynth.com and please subscribe to CatSynth TV.